Hi there, I'm Edmund Ward and today we're going to be talking about areology. Now what is areology? Uh, as you may be able to tell from my spiffy Martian globe here, uh, areology is the study of the planet Mars, uh, with Aries coming from the Latin for Mars. Um, it's essentially Martian geography, so today I'm going to be taking you on a brief tour of the Red Planet. Um, I personally really find it helpful uh, to see locations, locations of geographical features, locations of uh, Martian rovers, uh, locations of even fictional uh, places on Mars in their context on a globe. Understanding where they are in relation to each other uh, really helps me conceptualise of Mars as a real place, a place that we maybe will one day visit. Uh, as opposed to, you know, just a sort of science fiction destination. Um, I'm sure you know that Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the second smallest planet in the solar system, uh, about half the diameter of Earth, and that gives it about one third of the uh, gravity um, of Earth. Its days are a little bit longer than Earth days, but not by much. Um, its years are about twice as long. Now, one of the most striking physical features uh, of Mars that unfortunately isn't immediately appreciable from this flat globe um, is the striking difference in elevation between the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere is mostly low-lying plains, uh, smooth plains that were potentially formed by volcanic activity uh, a long time ago. And that's why in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll see it's most of the geographic features are planitias. So Arcadia planitia, Amazonis planitia, um, Acidalia planitia, Chrysae planitia, um, Utopia planitia, etc. Um, in the south, it's much higher. Uh, it's an older terrain, we believe. Um, and it's, it's, you, you'll be able to see here, it's, it's also cratered and rocky. Um, and it's actually a pretty clear dividing line between these two regions. We can, we can kind of trace a line across the globe that dips down and dips up, but is essentially a north-south divide. Um, uh, there's, there's essentially a, a cliff edge. So it, it does mean that if we were to terraform Mars and, and make it a, sort of a blue-green planet um, with a, a, you know, flooding um, the, the world with liquid water, what you would essentially get is one giant ocean in the northern hemisphere and one giant contiguous continent in the southern hemisphere. Uh, some exceptions uh, to this sort of north-south uh, divide are, of course, some of the most the most famous mountain uh, on of Mars is uh, Olympus Mons. And here it is, Olympus Mons. It is actually the tallest mountain in the entire solar system at uh, 21,000 metres tall. That's um, about two and a half times as tall as Everest. Um, if we travel uh, a, little, a little east of Olympus Mons, we'll see the fastest Mons. And these two would probably poke out of uh, a great ocean. Um, if it were to, to, to exist. Um, so in the, th the Tharsis Mons, we have three, three uh, uh, volcanic mountains in a row. We've got um, Arsia Mons, Pavonis Mons, and Ascrius Mons. And I apologize in advance if I am getting any of these pronunciations wrong. Um, the other big exception to the north-south divide is um, Hellas Planitia which sits on the low on the southern hemisphere and it actually contains the lowest point uh, on Mars, despite the, the north being broadly lower than the south. Um, in, in a terraformed Mars, this would, would represent one gigantic sea uh, at the bottom of, of, the, of the planet. Um, Hellas Planitia was, was probably formed by a crater impact. Um, and as such represents the lowest point on the planet. Um, and another really notable feature, if we, we, we trace our path back to the, um, the Tharsis Mons, 
if we continue east from the Tharsis Mons, we get to uh, a feature known as Valles Marinaris, and it is a ginormous canyon. This canyon is 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 basically uh, as long as the entire continental United States. Um, we believe that it was formed not by glaciers or rivers, but um, but by tectonic activity. Uh, however, you know there is a lot of evidence that there was once running water on Mars, and indeed we know for sure that there currently is uh, frozen water on Mars. Uh, for example, on the polar caps, and I can show you this on the on the globe right here. Here's a fun uh, location for some water. Um, Korolev Crater. Korolev Crater is obviously an impact crater that is full of uh, frozen water ice. Uh, it's named Korolev after um, the chief designer of the Soviet uh, missile program, the man responsible for putting Sputnik into orbit. Now Korolev Crater in itself, just that tiny dot there of, uh, of liquid water, let's show it again, just that tiny dot contains as much water as um, the Great Bear Lake in Canada. Um, and it, it's potentially a, a location where we could um, form a, a, a base, um, possibly digging into the crater and forming the base underneath that ice. We could use the ice for resources, for obviously for drinking water, but also for oxygen and fuel, um, and also use the vast quantities of ice in that crater um, as radiation shielding for a colony. So I'm going to now do a quick tour of some of the um, robotic missions that we've sent to uh, the Red Planet, starting, of course, with uh, Viking 1, uh, which was not a rover, but a lander. Um, and these are helpfully marked on the map on the whole for me. So this landed in uh, 1976. Um, and next to it is the uh, first uh, rover on Mars, Mars Pathfinder. Um, just a little bit further east and south, we've got the Opportunity rover. And let me see if I can find for us Spirit. Spirit is basically on the complete opposite side of the globe. Um, down here. But I'm sure you're mostly curious as to where Curiosity Rover is. Um, and Mars Curiosity Rover is just south of uh, Elysium Planitia uh, in a crater named Gale Crater. And that's where uh, Curiosity landed. Now, what is, I'm going to move on to some, some missions that aren't marked on this globe now. Uh, just north of Curiosity Rover, somewhere around here in Elys Elysium Planitia, uh, is the Mars InSight lander that landed fairly recently on Mars, hence why it's not on this globe. Uh, Mars InSight lander is uh, not a rover, but a lander. Um, but what's some interesting, the main interesting feature of the InSight lander is that it had a drill so it could measure um, tectonic activity, essentially listening for Mars quakes, and it has found some evidence of that. There is a mission launching this year that has previously been named the Mars 2020 rover, but recently got a name. The name was Perseverance. And it it's going to be landing just you know, some way to the west of uh, Curiosity Rover in a crater called Jezero, Jezero Crater. Jezero Crater is basically here, it's not labelled on this map, um, but it's it's on the sort of cusp between Isidus Planitia and Certis Major Planum. And if you look closely there, you can see what does look like water channels, and it is believed and partly why this location was selected for a rover mission, it is believed that the Jezero crater sits on what may have once been a former river delta. 
So that's obviously a great spot to land a rover looking for any evidence of past life. Um, Mars 2020 rover is called Perseverance. And the other interesting feature of the Mars 2020 rover is it's going to be equipped with the first ever Martian helicopter. Now I say helicopter, it's, it's more like a drone. Uh, and that's called Ingenuity. And that's going to be used, um, I believe, mostly to just scout ahead, to find good paths for the rover to take, which should make um, make it a much faster rover, much more able to make useful progress and pick targets much quicker and more efficiently than its predecessors, because it will have this advanced scouting uh, capability. Now, the Perseverance rover will be actually pretty close to the crash site of the Beagle 2 lander, which was, I believe, the UK's last um, attempted mission to Mars. Uh, Beagle 2 um, successfully hit the Red Planet, but I think it was a crash landing, which means it was not operational as a lander. Um, and one last uh, thing I will just point out for... Uh, Sort of in terms of future missions, is uh, an area which has been suggested as a potential location for uh, a SpaceX landing mission. Um, perhaps the, the, the location of SpaceX's first base. Now, to be honest with you, I expect by the time SpaceX are actually landing on Mars, um, the, you know, the location chosen could well have changed by then. But the last I read was that they were considering uh, a location somewhere in Erebus, Erebus Montes. Uh, again, pronunciation, I apologize. Erebus Montes, which is um, just a little bit northwest of uh, Olympus Mons. You can kind of see on this map here that Olympus is Mons sort of slopes leading up to Olympus Mons are huge, spread out hugely. So this is still kind of in the shadow of Olympus Montes. The, um, the key features in Erebus Mons are lava tubes, which would obviously also provide um, shelter from solar radiation. Um, and that's the main reason why that's been picked as an, as a, as an interesting area. It's also, you know, relatively north. And so we think that the chances of finding ice up there are, are, are greater. So that's kind of a whistle stop tour of some of the interesting features and locations where you know manned uh, or human uh, placed uh, rovers exist. Um, and I'll just finish off today with a couple of fun points from Mars, Mars in fiction. So um, I'll start with possibly one of the most famous Mars fictions, which is The Martian, uh, the book and the, and the TV. Or the, the, the movie, rather. Um, Mark Watney, as you may remember, scooped up the Mars Pathfinder uh, uh, in order to help him get home by contacting NASA using its, uh, its radio equipment. His journey to, his journey to, to, to the Pathfinder started from north in Acidalia, Phoenicia. Somewhere around here, I believe, is where his, uh, his, his landing site was, and he obviously had to go down and then back up in his rover. Um, back to Olympus Mons and the Tharsis Mons. This uh, middle uh, uh, mountain, volcanic mountain, Pavonis Mons, um, was in uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's Mars trilogy, uh, the site of uh, the Mars space elevator which allowed them to bring people and supplies down to the planet easily and indeed to get supplies back to earth um, cheaper and easier. Um, Pavonis Mons is a great place for a space elevator because it's obviously elevated so you don't have to lift uh, the goods as far but also it's slap bang on the equator so um, which is a, a good place for a, a space elevator because it means that the tether uh, has a more stable uh, orbit around the, the, the planet. Um, just a little bit south of uh, Pavonis Mons uh, is where I believe the dome city of Nicosia, also in Kim Stanley Robinson's uh, trilogy, yeah, is located. Um, just sort of um, 
in the opening of uh, the Great Canyon, Valles Marin Marinaris. Uh, and last but not least, I'll uh, show you Utopia Planitia. Uh, this will ring a bell if you're a Star Trek uh, fan and uh, know about uh, the Utopia Planitia dockyards or shipyards where most of the Federation starships are constructed. Uh, back in my day, uh, sort of in the DS9 era, I'm pretty sure that Utopia Planitia was, uh, was actually uh, a geostationary orbit above uh, Utopia Planitia uh, and not on the planet surface itself, although that's recently been changed in um, Star Trek Picard, where we do actually see uh, the Utopia Planitia dockyards uh, being blown up, I believe, uh, here by, uh, by synthetic life. And those are on the surface of the planet. So um, there you have it. So I hope that's been an interesting tour of the planet. I hope you've been able to see the globe well. Um, let me know uh, if, if you'd like to see more stuff like this. I know that um, I could go on for a lot longer about fictional locations on Mars. I mean, the Kim Stanley Robinson Mars trilogy itself travels all over the globe. So um, if I get 100 likes on this video, let's say, then I'll do a, a, a Mars trilogy. Uh, tour of Mars and we'll we'll look at all the cities and and key locations uh, that came up in that in that trilogy thanks for watching